Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In the previous video, we explored different challenges in JMeter. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In this video, we will discuss some of the JMeter interview questions. So let's get started. Preparation for an interview including JMeter is very important. So we need to give ourselves enough time to get ready. So that way we will feel more confident and answer any questions with confidence. So let's start with our first question. What kind of applications have you tested using? JMeter. Here they want to make sure that the projects and technologies you mentioned are correct. Please double check all the projects and technologies listed in your resume. Also check if there are any typos or make sure to include only the technologies that JMeter supports. Here are the different technologies that JMeter supports as of now. This list may grow with the new versions. So please refer to the Apache official website and validate your resume accordingly. The sample answer for this question is most of my experiences are surrounded by testing the web applications and in some situations, I have been asked to test the APIs as well. In general, most of the cases, we will be working with web applications and APIs only. If you have worked in any other protocols or technologies, you can also list out them here. Okay. So now let's move on to our next question. What are the various JMeter elements that you have used in your projects? Usually, you won't be asked to talk about all the elements. For example, they might ask you to explain different thread groups or sampler elements you have used in your project. So please try to remember at least two to three elements from each category and explain them with some examples. Now let's assume that they have asked you to talk about listeners. So you can say JMeter listeners are graphical components that allows us to monitor and analyze the results of the performance test. They provide valuable insights into various aspects of test execution including response time, throughput, errors and more. During the scripting phase, view results tree has been added to the test plan and to analyze the request and response data. Once the scripting phase is done, I have disabled this listener to avoid any overhead. For executions, I have used some additional plugins like three basic graphs and five additional graphs. Using these plugins, we can monitor active threads over time to understand the concurrency and the average response time, TPS, etc. In addition to this, summary and aggregated report listeners were also added to the test plan to get the overall minimum, maximum, average and percentile data for the tested business functionalities. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. What is the difference between pre and post processor elements? Name some of the elements that you have used in your projects. Here they are trying to understand your understanding of pre and post processor elements. So explain the difference in one or two sentences and try to name two or three elements from each category. So the sample answer to this question is pre processor elements execute before a sampler sends a request. They are used to modify or prepare the requested data before it is sent to the server. Some of the pre processor elements are like JSR223 pre processor, bean shell pre processor, user parameters, etc. In one of my projects, I used JSR 223 preprocessor to encode the user information into ASCII format and pass it on to the request as this is the requirement. Post processor elements execute after a sampler receives a response from the server. They are used to extract or manipulate data from the server for further analysis or use in subsequent requests. Some of the post processor elements are like regular expression extractor, JSR 223 post processor, JSON, CSS, XPath extractor. I have often used a regular expression extractor to correlate the dynamic values from the server response. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. Explain JMeter elements execution order. Here you need to remember all the element categories and explain the order in which they execute. Please do not try to change the order. Okay, we have a separate video to explain this concept. So if you are not sure about it, please watch that video. Okay, here is the answer for this question. First config elements will be executed and then preprocessor elements after the timers, samplers, post processors, assertions and finally listeners. Okay, now move on to our next question. In the interview, there may be some questions related to the correlation and parameterization concepts. So here you need to understand the question and explain the purpose of the concept in one or two sentences and the respective elements you have used to do it in JMeter. We have a separate dedicated video for correlation and parameterization. So please go through it once to revise the concepts. Here is a sample answer for both correlation and parameterization. Correlation is a process to capture the dynamic values from the server response. There are multiple ways to do it. One, adding regular expression extractor, which is a post processor element and defining the regular expression of the dynamic value so that when we execute the script, JMeter will capture the dynamic value and store it in a parameter. After that, we replace it with the parameter where the new value is stored. Okay. And the second approach is BlazeMeter has developed a plugin with which we can do automatic correlation. After recording, the plugin will give some suggestions for different dynamic values 
values, we can pick and choose the right one so that the value will be handled by the plugin. Regarding parameterization, it is a process of replacing the static value in the script with a user defined variable. These variables can be configured in the CSV data set config element or user parameter config element etc. In general, we will parameterize user credentials and their personal information like address, date of birth etc. If you are using CSV data set config elements, then we may need to provide the CSV file path into the config element so that JMeter can read the data from that file. Okay, let's move on to our next question. What is modularization and is it possible to achieve it in JMeter? So you can break this question into different parts so that you can easily explain. First explain the concepts of modularization, second explain one or two benefits and finally explain the JMeter elements with which we can easily achieve these modularizations. For more details, please refer modularization video in JMeter playlist. Here is the sample answer. Basically modularization means breaking down a large and complex piece into smaller self-contained parts. It is not recommended approach to copy all the repetitive steps in the script. If there is a change in that step, then we may need to update all the copied places. For this reason, we should use the modularization process. This approach has several benefits like reusability, scalability, flexibility, etc. In JMeter, it can be achieved using the test fragmented module controller or test fragment and include controller combination. Here you need to know about reusability, scalability, flexibility and sometimes after this answer they may ask you like what is scalability. Okay, so have some understanding about those terms as well. Now let's move on to our next question. Name some of the functions that you have used in your scripts and explain the purpose. While preparing for an interview, try to remember at least 4 to 5 JMeter built-in functions and practice them with some examples so that you will remember the syntax and parameters of the function. For more details, please refer to the functions video in JMeter playlist. Here are some generally used sample functions while testing the web applications. So we have time to return the current time and UUID to generate a unique ID. UUID nothing but universally unique identifier. And then we have random and random string to generate a random number or random string and P to read the JMeter property. And we have URL encode and decode to encode the URL or decode the URL okay now let's move on to the next question explain the scripting best practices that you or your team followed in JMeter here the interview would like to understand whether you followed any best practices for developing the JMeter scripts we have covered these topics extensively so please refer to the scripting best practices video for more details here is a sample answer for this question I consistently apply proper naming conventions to transactions within my scripts when enhancing scripts I ensure to remove the functional mode option from the test plan to prevent unnecessary overhead associated with the functional testing. Additionally, I eliminate unnecessary third party requests such as those to Google or Microsoft from the script. I prioritize to use the JMeter built in functions and minimize the custom coding. When custom coding is really necessary, I rely on the grooving scripting language. To maintain efficiency, I avoid excessive logging and disable results before starting the actual load test. I also modularize the code wherever feasible to enhance the maintainability. For test executions, I always utilize non GUI or CLI mode as it is the recommended approach for testing. I have also created a comprehensive document outlining all the necessary standards and best practices so that other team members can refer to the document and apply the same standards. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. What is JMeter root CA certificate and why do we need it? JMeter will generate the root CA certificate while recording the application traffic. For more details, you can refer how to record the script video. Okay, here is the sample answer to this question. HTTPS connections use certificates to authenticate the connection between the browser and and the web server. A root certificate is a certificate issued by a trusted certificate authority. As JMeter is going to intercept the traffic between the browser and the server during the script recording, it needs to use its own certificate. So JMeter will generate its root certificate and by default it will be valid for 7 days. We can also extend the validity by updating the proxy cert validity property under the JMeter properties file. After certificate generation, we will import it into browser's trusted root certificate authority so that the browser will consider JMeter generated certificate as trusted certificate and will allow JMeter to intercept the traffic between browser and the server. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. What is the need for a client certificate and how to configure it in JMeter? Client side certificates are generally used for security purposes and they will be given to us by the application team. In JMeter, we can configure them using SSL manager or JMeter properties. Please refer to the API performance testing video to understand more about it. Okay, here is the sample answer to this question. 
question. Some application servers would like to know to whom they are exactly connecting to. So it will enforce to present the certificate to proceed any further with the request. The certificate that the client is going to present to the server to prove his identity is called a client side certificate. In our project, we obtained the client certificate from the application team. They have provided us with the certificate in PEM, which is nothing but privacy enhanced mail format. Since JMeter accepts JKS, Java key store formats, and it is not possible directly convert from PEM to JKS first, we have converted the PEM certificate to PKCS12 using the OpenSSL utility and then converted PKCS12 to JKS using key tool utility. After the conversion, we have updated the Java Net SSL key store properties in JMeter properties file. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. Explain the challenges, scripting or executions that you have faced in your projects. In every interview, this question will be asked. So go through the challenges video and try to remember one or two challenges. Now let's move on to our next question. Scenario based questions. In some situations, the interviewer may give some scenarios and we need to explain the process of handling that scenario. So please try to understand the given scenario. If it is unclear to you, please don't hesitate to ask and clarify the questions. Now let's look at a couple of example scenarios. Scenario 1. I have a script that has 10 thread groups with 2 hours of steady state duration. First 3 thread groups are expected to run only for 5 minutes in the first hour. In the second hour as well, we need 5 minutes of execution for those 3 thread groups. How can we design this scenario to achieve this requirement? Scenario number 2. We have 2 APIs and we should test one API with 75% of load and another with 25% of load. How do we design the scenario and what elements do we use to achieve the target throughput? Here is the sample answer for both scenarios. For scenario 1, an ultimate thread group can be added and we can create multiple rows and add the initial delay and the duration accordingly so that the samplers inside the thread group will be executed. For scenario 2, we have different throughput controlling elements available like throughput controller or weighted switch controller. We can add the APIs in one of those controllers and define the throughput percentage requirements accordingly. Okay. Now let's move on to our next question. What is the distributed load testing and explain the different components involved in this testing. So here quickly explain one or two sentences about distributed testing then explain different involved components and their purposes. Okay. Here is the sample answer. Distributed testing refers to the process of running a performance test using multiple JMeter instances to generate load against a target application or server. This approach allows to simulate a large number of concurrent users and generate higher loads than a single JMeter instance could handle alone. There are two main components involved. Control node, the system controls the test and worker node, the system that takes commands from the controller node and sends requests to the target system. First, on the worker node, we will run the JMeter server batch file if it is a Windows or if it is a Linux, then we will run the JMeter-server script. And then on the controller node, we will update the remote host property from the JMeter property with all the worker node IPs. And then we will start the test. Okay. Now let's move on to our next question. How many threads can we run in one worker node? In general, there is no such hard rule that will apply to all worker nodes. Scheduling the number of threads depends on various factors. So here is the sample answer for this question. Executing the number of threads depends on different factors such as hardware configuration like the processor, JVM, allocated heap memory and the number of elements configured in the test plan. We can run some tests to understand the worker node resource usage and then schedule the appropriate threads accordingly. Now let's move on to our final question. Questions around integration. There may be some questions around JMeter integrations with other tools like InfluxDB, Grafana or integrating in CI/CD pipeline etc. So explain the process that you have learned. We have separate videos explaining these integrations. So please go through them once. Okay. Let's assume that they have asked about InfluxDB and Grafana integration. Then you can say I have integrated InfluxDB with JMeter as a backend listener. In Grafana, I have created a data source connected to InfluxDB and pulled all the JMeter reporting data. In Grafana, I have created a dashboard with different metrics like transaction response time, throughput, errors, etc. to view the JMeter load test results. So these are some of the commonly asked interview questions. Based on your resume and the projects, there may be some more questions. So please make sure you understand everything you have mentioned in your resume and projects. If there is something that you are not sure about, it is best to remove it from your resume. It is not good if you cannot answer questions about the things that you have listed. All the very best with your interview preparations. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, please feel free to leave a comment below. 
All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. With this video, we have completed all the planned JMeter concept. I'll see you with the next module video. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.